Hi, it's Julian, and in this video, we're going to be bringing together what we have learned from the previous video on fonts into layout and contrast. So before we dive into this aspect, we're going to explain some assumptions that we have made when it comes to the websites we are talking about in this series. These videos have been created around the idea that we are discussing content management system websites, or CMSs. So this means the site in effect has two sites, one called the front end and one the back end. The front end is the site that the public sees. The back end is where the content creator adds their content. So this includes text, images, embeds of videos. For content management systems to work, there has to be a level of templating and structure that is designed into that site. For example, an event section will have the additional content fields and functionality that allow the creator to add dates and times. Whereas for an article page, they will have all the tools to allow them to make written content and embed media, and it is likely things will be automatically pulled into the page when published. Things like date of article, and potentially even author's name and a bio image. These content types are worked out during the design and build of the website. So when the website is built, we work with an organization to break down what the structure of the site is and what the content needs are for those sections. That way, when a user makes a type of page, they only get the fields they need, which helps the person from being overwhelmed by being provided all the options on all the pages. But this isn't a perfect system. The content creator still has to be skilled in creating content within the agreed templates. The creator has to build around the options that have been provided. So it's very different from a one-off perfectly crafted website where the content is fixed and will never change. It's similar to the difference between a comic book and a novel. The novel structure allows us to flow new text into the middle, beginning or end without any real issue. So sure, we might have to adjust the chapters and maybe even the page numbers, but it's pretty simple to do. Whereas if we dropped a couple of new panels into the center of a comic book, it would have a huge impact on the following pages as these would need to be completely restructured, if not redesigned. So the CMS allows a user to add, edit, publish, and delete rich media content, but it's within an existing template, and in a way, it's a law of averages. The system is likely good enough for 90% of all scenarios, but thought is still needed when adding this content. So the reason we have covered this is because when we now move on to layout and contrast, these design choices will have to be taken into consideration. Okay, so let's talk about layout. Well, when we're talking about a website, layout is really the look of the overall shape of a page. So this is how boxes for media, such as images and text, all fit together. And we're also really importantly thinking about how that layout adapts when it's viewed on different devices and screen sizes. So for example, the layout of this homepage that you can see now on the screen responds to different screen sizes and reorders and rescales its content. But you'll know it's only the image that proportionally scales. The text doesn't. And that's because if it did, on the smallest screen sizes, it's likely the text would become illegible. So what we see is that the templated blocks reorder at specific screen sizes to ensure the user gets a consistent, legible and accessible experience, no matter the screen they're viewing from. So these are responsive considerations. In the example we have, you can see that the image is pretty much scaling with the design, but the font is reducing in size in stages. This is to maintain that consistency. But it also means the sizes of the box the text is in has to change. And then the design from a big landscape screen to a small portrait phone screen is very different. You'll notice also that the relationship with the text and image has also changed. So where before the text was completely legible because there was a, enough contrast between the font and the image, the rescaling of the image has moved some of the brighter parts of the image and we are now getting an interaction that has created an experience with compromised legibility. Therefore, we would need to try and minimize these clashes. The most obvious way is to take the text off the image. 
Or we could potentially add a box underneath the text that could either lighten the image or darken the image, so providing enough contrast between the text and that box. And remember what we said earlier, the image and text has been added through the content management system. So it's not like we can easily make a bespoke page for the contrast issue. It's just not viable. These templates have to work across multiple pages. I hope you're enjoying the video and finding it informative. I just wanted to thank all of the subscribers we have on the channel already. And also to say, if you're not subscribed, but are enjoying the videos, please do consider subscribing or drop us a like. It really helps us out so much. Anyway, now back to the video. So let's talk about contrast. We briefly spoke about how text and image contrast was suffering in the previous example. This can also be an issue more generally when we're picking font colors against consistent background colors. So while we have the benefit of knowing the background color isn't going to change, we still need to make sure there is enough contrast between the two colors, that of the font and that of the background. If not, then we might find ourselves in a situation where for a large percentage of your users, they won't be able to see the majority of your content. I think at this stage, it's also important to think more broadly about layout and contrast. It used to be that when we were designing web pages, we could almost guarantee where people were viewing those pages from. It was generally in a well-lit room with very little glare on their screen. They were ultimately viewing the pages in perfect conditions. Now, however, that is more the exception than the rule. With well over 50% of web pages being viewed through a mobile device, we can assume a large proportion of these views is going to be outside. So this might mean people reading pages in bright sunshine while walking or on a commute, bouncing along a train line or bus route. These additional factors are even more reason to start thinking about the user experience and to try and make it as simple and easy as possible for that user. So as a rule of thumb, consider using slightly larger fonts than you would normally use in ideal situations and allow people to consume content in the media they wish. So that might mean videos with captions. To help you know if there is sufficient contrast between text and background, there are a number of websites that you can use to test your colors to ensure there is that contrast. And remember, there are slightly different rules between small text and large text. I'll stick a link below in the description for websites that we use when testing contrast. Also, we'll be covering altering designs through interactions and build in future videos. So if there's anything you would like us to specifically cover, do let us know. So in summary, when thinking about your design layout, consider all sizes of screen. Don't forget websites are being viewed outside on the move more than they are in the office on widescreen monitors. And finally, ensure the text has enough contrast for the size it is. I hope you enjoyed the video. Is there anything that we missed out regarding contrast and layout? If there is, then do share it in the comments below. Thanks again and see you in the next video.